Something I can't stress enough about the world of personal finance is that frugal living is not where it ends. Saving money, being thoughtful, budgeting your money, all of that stuff is great, but that is not where it ends. If you were to view your money in terms of layers or sections, you would see that frugal living and saving money are actually at the very bottom. It's a lot like building a house, a house of cards, and guess what? Saving money and frugal living are the cards at the bottom that hold everything else up. So my question to you is, why stop at the bottom? What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. In this channel, I talk about saving money, budgeting money, getting out of debt, increasing your income, and several personal growth topics, and I bring it all the way back to my own personal experiences so that you can get motivated. Let's get into the video. Now, I know you're thinking, a house of cards? Yes a house of cards. See, I have this very deep philosophical approach to personal finances and that's where all my crazy analogies come from, but I promise you it'll make sense in just a second. So the cards represent money. So whenever you're building on this house of cards, that represents your money growing. And when your house of cards falls, that represents you losing money. So let's talk about the bottom row or the foundation of the entire house of cards, also known as frugal living and saving money. These are technically the easiest part to build, but they require a strong mindset as well as discipline to go with them. The thing about this is even though it's the easiest part to build, if you build it incorrectly, if you have a house on an incorrect, unstable, foundation guess what everything you've ever worked for comes crashing down now if you've ever built a house of cards before you know it's not an easy thing to do because outside of the fact that cars are very fragile and delicate and they just go flying everywhere and they're so easy to fall you also have outside forces also known as people so you know you're cruising along you're saving money you're being smart about how you're spending your money then boom Somebody tries to knock your house of cards down. Sure, you've built a solid savings. And sure, you're being very mindful about what you buy, where your money goes, and you're keeping the future in mind no matter what. That's great, but then a friend of yours comes up to you asking for money. What do you do? Well, I mean, it depends, right? We've all had a friend or a relative ask us for money before, but where do you draw that line? How much is too much? You know, I've personally had friends ask me for $20 here, $50 there, like, you know, no big deal. But you know what I'm saying? They, they actually made it their life's mission to pay me back that money. So now if they ever ask me for money again, I will give it to them without hesitation. But of course, one day I got a text from one of my old friends who I haven't talked to in over three years, and he was asking me for money. And so, you know, I'm being all generous. I'm like, okay, bro, well, how much do you need? You know what he said? He was like, I need some rent money, man. I need $700. I was like, $700? 700 what? I'm not paying for that. I'm not about to pay that. That is trifling. Ain't talked to me in over three years. And the first text I get from you is, can I get some rent money? No. Must have lost your mind. What do you think this is, bro? I would not be able to look myself in the mirror. If I pay for another grown man's rent, then you go to their Facebook page and you see, you know, they got a fresh pair of J's on. They got a beer in their hand. So you're telling me you can afford fresh clothes, fresh shoes, and some beer, but you can't afford rent? Yeah, I'm, I won't be paying your rent, bro. I'm sorry. Needless to say, this guy was trying to knock my house of cards down. What do I look like letting you knock my house of cards down so I can keep your house of cards up? That's what would have happened if I would have paid his rent. I, uh, I'll pay you back, bro. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because if you can't afford it this month, I highly doubt you can afford it next month. Reggie, I need another $700. No, not from me. But as you can see, that guy tried to knock my house of cars down, but I wouldn't let him. Why? Because I had that strong foundation. I had that strong mindset. My priorities were straight. My mindset was not on people pleasing. It was on saving money and building a secure future for myself, which most importantly meant I would not allow anyone, anyone to influence me or guilt trip me into giving somebody money just because I had it. And you know, after a while of persevering and keeping this mindset, you, you find that, you know, you save more money, you put a lot more money away. Now you have a few emergency funds going. Now you're feeling a lot more comfortable. You feel a lot more confident in yourself financially. So now you feel comfortable enough to go to the next row. 
Now this is the row above the foundation. And like I said before, not a lot of people really get past the first row because most people are just fine with frugal living and saving, but I'm here to show you that there's more to life than just frugal living and saving your money. And I think it's important for me to show you guys the path that you can take to actually maximize the amount of money that you make so that you can live life on your own terms. So the next part of this house of cards is gonna be building another stream of income on top of your primary stream of income. And it doesn't have to be another job, it doesn't have to be a business or anything like that. It could be as simple as having a side hustle that brings in an extra couple of hundred dollars to your bank account every single month. For example, like I used to pressure wash houses, mow lawns, clean garages, all kinds of stuff. So you're probably asking, why well, build another stream of income? I feel comfortable with just my one stream of income. So you don't have to rely on just one stack of cards. Another stream of income gets added, guess what? That's another stack of cards. Now you can add on to your house of cards. You can make it much, much bigger because now you have more quantity of cards to choose from. But of course, the bigger your house of cards gets, that's the more people who try to knock it down. Man, you know this house of cards analogy is cold. Have you ever noticed that whenever someone goes into business for themselves or starts a YouTube channel, there is like not that many people who really support them, like really, really support them? I mean, really, family and friends alike, they're like the most discouraging people to possibly be around whenever you start a venture or you have this bright idea that you wanna start or you have a business idea or you start a YouTube channel. They can be some of the most discouraging people to be around. Man, that won't work. Man, how long are you going to give that before you stop doing that mess? What makes you think they'll listen to you? What do you have that's so special that other people don't that they got to listen to you? Trust me, I've heard it all before and guess what? That's them trying to knock your house of cards down. Don't fall for that. Anyway, the money that you get from your side hustle goes back into your savings and you apply the exact same mindset as you did in row number one. And that's keeping a frugal living mindset as well as a money saving mindset so that you can build your future and continue to build it with the excess money that you have coming in. And that mindset is, okay, I'm making more money. I'm gonna keep my expenses exactly the same because that's what being frugal is all about, keeping expenses low. And what does that do? that further strengthens the bottom row. Then you know what you do? You put some of that extra money from your side income back into your savings. So now you have money from your job and money from your side hustle both going into your savings. Code! Just know that the challenges presented when you were building your first row of your house of cards are always going to be there and they're not going anywhere. And it's gonna be there all throughout your entire time of building your house of cards. People will continue to ask you for money. There will still be temptations, like you will see your favorite products ever, your favorite shoes, your, your favorite brands of shoes, clothes, technology. You will see them marketed so brilliantly that they're in front of you literally at all times. No matter where you turn, no matter where you go, no matter who you're with, that product is right there in your face. You gotta decide if you want that temptation to knock that portion of your house of cards down. And this is exactly what I mean. Bro, I lie to you not. I was just talking to a good friend of mine the other day saying how I really want to make a logo for my personal brand. I strongly believe my iPhone overheard me say that because as soon as I got on Instagram that day, guess what popped up on the ads on my feed, bro? That's right, logo makers. All kinds of different logo makers. That's how they get you. But you know, that's not so bad. That's okay because a, a logo would actually be a pretty good investment for me to make right now on my own personal brand. That would actually make perfect sense for me to do. Which brings me to my next point, and this is actually the final part of the entire house of cards, and that's investment. So like I said about row number two, it could literally be anything you want to. It could be YouTube, it could be blogging, it could, it could be pressure washing, it could be mowing lines, it could be some form of teaching. But the bottom line is, this, the third row, this is where you invest back into your side hustle. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you cut grass as a side hustle and you see that, hey, I can optimize the way I cut my grass by investing in a better lawnmower that cuts faster that I can maybe ride on instead of pushing, maybe I can be more effective in doing it. Guess what? I'm gonna invest in me a new lawnmower. That makes sense to do. For example, me, I'm, I'm in YouTube for the long haul, so what did I do? I invested in better equipment. What else did I do? I invested in mentorship and coaching behind growing my YouTube channel, and I've only seen 
amazing results out of that. Those are both examples in investing into your side hustle because these things are going to bring you more money. So why wouldn't you put more money into them? Doesn't make sense not to. And here's what I want you to get. You see, it's it is okay to spend money sometimes, especially when it's putting money into something that is going to get you more money in the long run anyway. My thought is the outcome is going to be income. And whenever I have that thought, I have no second guesses putting money into it. Like YouTube, I didn't second guess that. I put all kinds of money into my YouTube channel because I know the amount of money that is going to come out of it. I know there's going to be a ridiculous income stream behind it. I just, I know. I mean, really, this is how wealthy people think. There's literally wealthy people out there that reinvest every single cent of every dollar made from whatever they're doing, whether it's a side hustle, whether it's a business venture, whatever it is, they reinvest every cent of profit that they get so they can improve their business that they have or improve whatever side hustle that they have so it can make them more money in the future. That is why the rich get richer and their reinvestments look different it could be in the form of education to make them more knowledgeable so they can become better at what they're doing it could be in the form of equipment it could be in the form of people to help them continue to build whatever it is that they're building or they can hire more people so that the people that they hire can run the business for them so that they don't have to because the people that you hire might be better at running the business than you are that's why you hire them and because they're better than you are they're going to make more money for you does that make sense so it's obviously going to help their money grow even more that's why investments are so important reinvesting what you make into your side hustle that's going to help you out a lot being frugal is great and all but I want to be frugal and wealthy, but you know, there's building blocks to get there and there's a framework you have to follow. So that's why I'm giving you guys this framework, this mindset and this philosophy to follow because that's, that's how you do it. School doesn't teach you about this. I know I certainly wasn't taught this in school. I'd read about this stuff on my own time and I had to talk to the right people and surround myself around the right people at the right times and have the right conversations and discussions at the right time to learn and absorb and understand this concept because this is literally how you become wealthy. Just being frugal, just saving money is great. It's a great start and you can save a lot of money doing it. It's not gonna make you wealthy though. So to take this back full circle, Reinvesting in your side hustle strengthens your side hustle, which strengthens the second row of your house of cards. And when the second row becomes stronger, guess what? That means the first row is too, because remember you're feeding the money from the second row back into the first row because that makes your foundation stronger. Again, the key to do this successfully is you have to apply the mindset of each layer of each row of the house of cards. Because if you decide, oh, I'm making all this money, and then you get reckless with your money, right? You start digging into your savings. You stop saving money altogether because you feel like you just have all kinds of money at your disposal, not realizing that the savings isn't going to last forever. And then, you know, your side hustle flops and you lose your job. Your whole house of cards will come falling down. Your house of cards will be looking sorry. And any hopes, any chance at all of you keeping that house of cards up is going to be done for because you've allowed outside forces to knock it down. That's what happens when you neglect to use the mindset within the first row. But the second row, you know, let's say you let somebody influence you to the point of doubting yourself of, you know, that side hustle isn't going to work. So then you doubt yourself to the point of not even pursuing the side hustle. Guess what? If you do that, there will be no second row, period. Well, you have to worry about that. And on the other end, if you choose not to invest into the second row via the third row, then you limit your earning power altogether and you only have two rows, which that's fine because most people don't even get past the first row. But we're trying to maximize your financial potential here. So I'm I'm giving you all I can give you. These all have to work together to create a seamless house of cards. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong about any of this when I say this is how you become wealthy because this is also assuming that you have other investments on the side outside of just your 401k in addition to having a job 
in addition to having a side hustle, you know, assuming that you're saving correctly anyways, that's all automatically assuming that you have investments on the side, if that makes sense. These types of investments have compound interest and over the time of several years, these things will compound quite a bit to the point of gaining hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're doing your investments correctly. So imagine that on top of a side hustle, on top of a job, you're going to be adding quite a bit to your money. I'm sure this is a much different outlook than you were probably expecting, but just really think about it. I mean, seriously, having another stream of income makes your life so much more secure. It gives you more options. And I mean, I'm speaking from experience here. It makes you feel a lot more confident, even if it's just a little bit of, of side income. It will make you feel so much more confident financially because you know you have an extra couple of hundred bucks coming in every single month. And just think about how far that little bit can go if you continue to reinvest in it over and over and over again. And the reason I'm telling you about all this is because I wish somebody would have told me about this when I was younger, like much younger. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.